Good morning. This is Heather Thomas with the Joint Information Center for Snohomish County's response to COVID-19. I'm going to take a moment to click some buttons to make sure that all the media who have joined us have permission to record. You will have permission to record this briefing and we are also recording and that link to the video will be made available on the Snohomish Health District's website. So give me just a moment here. Okay, I think I got everybody, but if for some reason someone does not have permission to record, go ahead and send a note to the Joint Information Center in the chat box and I will get that fixed. This morning we're joined by Snohomish County Executive Dave Summers, Snohomish County Department of Emergency Management Director Jason Bierman, and Snohomish Health District Administrative Officer Sean Frederick. Each of our speakers will provide an update and after they have shared their remarks, we'll be taking questions using the chat feature. Please be sure to submit your questions to everyone so that all of our speakers can see. Thank you again for joining us. And with that, I will hand it over to Executive Summers. Oh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good to see you all. Um, so a few uh, items on our plate. Yesterday, the uh, County Council approved my proposal to create an Office of Recovery. Uh, and that includes seven project positions or FTEs. This is being funded out of our first $80 million allotment from the American Rescue Plan Act. So why are we doing this now? We've actually been planning for this for many, many months. Uh, disaster recovery usually is thought of as being like post-earthquake, post-flood, or other natural disaster that really causes significant physical damage in a relatively short period of time. But um, our past experience actually has been that. Uh, for example, the 530 slide is the most significant recent example. This uh, is really not a typical disaster. It's had several waves, um, as we've seen over the last year. We've had a really extended and ongoing uh, ECC activation. We uh, in the ECC have relied on 177 staff from 18 agencies and over 56,000 hours of work uh, during the pandemic. We tripled Department of Emergency Management staff uh, and managed internal turnover without a dedicated HR person. Uh, it's a lot of management to do over that period of time. And we also managed appropriations equaling about a decade of our average budget for DEM over this last year. So we really need to um, now focus on demobilization, processing FEMA public assistance, and further support for vaccinations and no, a number of activities now uh, in the recovery mode. So really post-disaster local government, again, is the primary driver behind recovery activities. Um, community recovery really looks different in terms of priorities, resources, and partnerships. Uh, in the wake of COVID-19, Snohomish County will implement its recovery framework to really collaborate with local jurisdictions and diverse government services, the health and medical community, the private sector, nonprofits and schools to recover the local economy and really work to restore our quality of life here in Snohomish County. So we will also ensure that we're reaching every community in Snohomish County. Um, very diverse place and a lot of outreach show will be happening over the next year or four years of which is the term of the ARPA funds. So the Office of Recovery is really going to be managing the various aspects of uh, that long term recovery activity. The office is going to be coordinated out of my office, the executive's office, and there are going to be four functional areas that uh, the office will help coordinate. The first one is economic. Uh, we're going to continue to work with our businesses and work to return economic and business activities, including agriculture, uh, to a stronger base and develop new economic opportunities that result in a sustainable and prosperous economy and hopefully economic resiliency. Uh, the second area is uh, housing, and we're going to continue to work to implement housing solutions that effectively support the needs of the whole community and again, contribute to its sustainability and resilience. 
Uh, third area of activity is human and social services. In this area, we're going to restore and improve social services networks to promote resilience, health, independence, and well-being of the whole community. And the final area is uh, it will be public health and medical services uh, with the Snohomish Health District in the lead. In this area, we're going to work to restore and improve health services and promote resilience, health, and well-being of the whole community once again. So our immediate priorities for the Office of Recovery are to ensure that we will maintain programs put in place with CARES Act funds uh, from last year to support our residents and businesses and that they look to existing plans, especially those that have had community input to develop recommended short and long-term goals. We need to ensure successful planning, coordination, management, and execution of the county's community and economic development recovery efforts. So I really appreciate the partnerships we've had with the county council over the last year. Uh, our team has really done a tremendous job and a ton of work. Uh, you can't even imagine the, the amount of work that's gone into this past year and the work in front of us. Um, we're now really in the process of formally establishing our recovery and our recovery team that'll be with us um, for several years at least. And I'm really grateful to the County Council for their support. Our community in Snohomish County has really come together to fight the pandemic. I'm very proud of them. And I know we're going to do the same as we uh, move into recovery. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jason Bierman, uh, Director of Snohomish County Department of Emergency Management. Jason. Thanks, Executive Summers, and good morning to everyone. Uh, some updates on the vaccination efforts and the vaccine task force. Um, so some weeks ago, the governor offered the goal of reaching 70% or, or June 30th as a date, a target date for reopening the state. And it's certainly something we've reiterated uh, during many of these calls and, and the county's ability to, to support that. Um, as for that statewide goal of reaching 70% of folks 16 or older, we're now over about we're now just over 63% in Snohomish County, uh, folks who've received their first dose and are over the age of 16. So we're about 42,000 residents away from reaching the 70% mark. And, and to put that in context, that's a, a city about the size of Edmonds. So we're, we're getting much closer uh, to reaching that goal of 70%. Uh, we've now reached over half of our population, our residents who are over 12 uh, are now fully vaccinated. And last week, another 20,700 Snohomish County residents became fully vaccinated. So that's really fantastic. Uh, a little over 10,000 more who received their first dose of a two dose um, regimen. So overall, uh, there's been about 780,000 doses of vaccine administered throughout Snohomish County by all the providers, all the great partners. And included in that's about 325,000 that were done by the vaccine task force. Um, so as Executive Summers mentioned, a significant amount of work uh, in and among all the other things that, that have been coordinated out of the ECC. Uh, the vaccine task force is going to continue to offer first doses of Pfizer for folks 12 and older at the Ashway Park and Ride mass vaccination site in Linwood. Uh, as a reminder, you can get there by car, uh, you can get there by mass transit, uh, by bus, or on foot for walk-up appointments. Um, Please again also remember that um, people between the age of 12 and 17 still need to be accompanied by an adult parent or guardian. Uh, check the site schedule uh, because the number of days, as I mentioned, uh, as we sort of ramp down the mass vaccination efforts, the number of days the site is open uh, will, will continue to be reduced. Um, there are also community-based clinics that are gonna be scheduled or that are scheduled throughout the month of June uh, for first dose Pfizer. Uh, there's a calendar for those clinics on the mass vaccination webpage. And I know right now on the schedule are some schools in Everett, Granite Falls and Snohomish, uh, community and faith-based uh, events and the Stanwood Library on June 15th. Uh, I wanna reiterate a couple of other things. Uh, we will continue to make sure that we have availability for second dose of both Moderna and Pfizer. So if, if you received your first dose, at one of our mass vaccination sites, we will have them open and available for second dose uh, to ensure that anyone who started the series with us has the opportunity uh, to become fully vaccinated and, and please take that opportunity. Um, we also know that a lot of medical providers around the county have vaccine available. So you can check with your local pharmacy, check with your clinic, um, talk to your healthcare provider, 
again, if you start the series with us at one of our mass vaccination sites, we'll have them open throughout the either three or four week period to ensure that you can have the opportunity to get your, your second dose of your two dose regimen. Um, Executive Summers talked about uh, community recovery. Um, it, it is an endeavor that involves all of us, just like the response to this pandemic has been. Um, and as long as the pandemic has felt to us, as he, as he alluded to, the, the long-term recovery will also be long-term. So it, it will take all of us. Um, it doesn't mean that COVID's gone. Uh, we still need to stay healthy, still need to keep safety in mind, utilize those good habits that you've picked up. Um, you know, uh, we know folks can take off their mask once they're vaccinated, but keep washing your hands, excuse me, your hands, uh, mind your distance when you're in large crowded settings, and of course, stay home if you don't feel well. Um, we're moving into the summer and into the fall. Um, we're getting through this with the support of the entire community, uh, with neighbors helping neighbors, with the partnership of lots of agencies, including the health district, and, and I'll turn it over to Sean here in just a second. But uh, just the last thing, you know, again, keeping in mind that COVID is not gone. Um, if it's getting your shot, getting your second shot, uh, talking to a loved one or a family member who needs some support, um, shopping, dining at a local business, everyone has a role in this. Um, we all can play a part in, in getting through this and getting through the recovery. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Sean and, and thanks uh, for a chance to update you. Thank you, Jason, and, and good morning, everyone. As many of you have seen in our press release last Friday, it's now been more than 500 days uh, since our first confirmed case of COVID-19 in the United States uh, was identified here in Snohomish County. Now, I want to recap some of the uh, statistics that we shared in the press release because they're pretty powerful. Nearly 40,000 people in Snohomish County became reported cases, which is nearly one in every 20 residents. But those are just the reported uh, numbers. Uh, the CDC uh, shared their COVID-19 disease burden estimates, stating that only one in four infections were actually reported. Given that figure, it's possible that as many as 150,000 more Snohomish County residents may have been infected but not diagnosed. The lower end in that estimate would be about 80,000 people. That's 120,000 to 200,000 residents or 15 to 25% of our population having been infected with COVID since the beginning of the pandemic. Close to 2,000 people in Snohomish County have been hospitalized and 591 lives lost to COVID-19 since January 20th of, of last year. Compare that to an average of 26 lives lost annually due to influenza during the 2015 through 29 flu seasons. We also know that the number of hospitalizations and deaths don't give the full picture of COVID's impact in our community. While younger residents may have been spared from death and hospitalization, they, don't they do experience a heavy burden of lasting post-COVID health impacts. Research studies in the Journal of American um, Medical Association in Clinical Infection Disease suggest that up to 30 to 50% of COVID patients continue to experience fatigue, shortness of breath, brain fog, and other lingering systems. Another report, another recent report in Nature also highlighted what they found to be a lasting health burden on people, societies, and economies. Health economists estimated uh, that up to 30% of society's health burden from COVID-19 across all age groups is due to post-COVID disability. Every age group in every part of the county has been impacted by this pandemic, and it'll take some, quite some time for us to fully recover. But there's reason to be hopeful. Case counts are on a decline again. For the two week period through Saturday, June 6th, our rolling case rate uh, dropped again to 103 per 100,000. This is back to where we were briefly in March before heading back up. Snohomish County has weathered its fourth wave and we're on the road to recovery. That is thanking, that's thanks in large part to the growing number of people getting vaccinated. To the 423,000 people and counting here in Snohomish County who've gotten vaccinated, we thank you. It takes all of us coming together to knock out COVID. And it's because of all of you taking your shot and the hundreds of thousands of residents masking up until they get vaccinated. If you're eligible and haven't gotten your uh, vaccine, it's not too late. Get vaccinated now so you can enjoy all the summer has to offer. People and businesses are able to plan ahead with a little more confidence now 
while we're not out of the woods yet, we do have a lot more breathing room. Still, to further reduce the level of cases and hospitalizations and keep them down, we need to continue uh, for a sustained period with the masking and distancing until we, we are fully protected uh, via vaccination. That's allowing us at the health district to plan ahead as well. Together with the Department of Emergency Management, we're looking uh, at how we right-size response planning and recovery efforts. This doesn't mean that we're done. We also have prevention and disease response efforts beyond COVID-19 that we need to turn more of our attention to. So a lot of our time right now is focused on striking the right balance, ensuring capacity to scale back up if disease trends reverse course, uh, continuing to get Snohomish County vaccinated and supporting communities in their planning and recovery efforts. We've come a long way in the last 16 months. I continue to be immensely proud of uh, the work of the, that the staff, the temporary employees and volunteers have done and continue to do. I deeply appreciate the steadfast leadership of our Board of Health, as well as Dr. Spitters and Executive Summers during this unprecedented time. I'm thankful for the support and collaboration from Jason, DEM, uh, Fire and EMS, healthcare providers, schools, and countless other city and state partners. And I want to express my gratitude to the people and businesses of Snohomish County. You all continue to show how, resi how resilient our community is and then we come out stronger on the other side of this adversity. With that, I'll turn it back to Executive Summers. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, it's been a great partnership and I very much appreciate all the health district has done and, and uh, just the teamwork that's gone on. So thank you. So a couple of questions we have. Uh, first is there's a difference in the numbers provided by the federal government versus the state government when it comes to percentage of people who have begun their vaccinations. Uh, what's your take on reopening earlier than June 30th? Um, we seem to be meeting the federal threshold. And what are business owners telling you? Are you getting any guidance from the state about an early reopening? So I guess I'll start on this one and anybody else can jump in. Uh, I met with the governor yesterday. We did not discuss opening earlier. Uh, we did discuss the numbers. Uh, the state numbers are based on a larger group. I believe it's uh, 16 and older whereas the federal numbers <clears throat> are 18 and older. And I think uh, obviously it's a state decision to open up. Uh, I think the state is intending on planning to use their numbers, uh, which are probably um, more up-to-date and accurate. And so uh, no indication that we will be reopening early. Like uh, who knows what's down, down the road, but that's as of uh, yesterday. Uh, Sean or Jason, do you have anything to add to that? Okay. Um, have you seen an increase in vaccinations since the lottery was announced? Uh, anybody? It, we have not at our sites, at least at the mass vaccination sites. Um, so I'm not sure if Sean, if they've, at the health district has noticed any among the providers, but, but we have not at our sites. We, we haven't seen any indication either through the healthcare system of an increased uh, demand. Okay, um, let's see, we've got some information. Uh, next question, with your significant numbers of military, uh, particularly Navy employees and families, is it possible your vaccination percent is much higher because Fed numbers aren't shared? I'll have to turn that one over to Sean, perhaps. Sure. Um, it is possible that the numbers are, are slightly high, higher. However, without knowing uh, the number of vaccines that have been administered, uh, it's, it's difficult to say how significant that impact would be uh, when we talk about the, the sheer number of vaccines that it would take to move the needle um, in, in terms of the percentages that we're at in the county. Uh, we're talking about over 700,000 uh, immunizations that have been administered total it would take a significant number of vaccines to, to, to really move those percentages. Okay, any other questions? Any other questions this morning? Uh, any ideas how many folks uh, got vaccinated at the Funco Field clinics? I think I, I know of one, but uh, Sean or Jason. Uh, 
Yeah, I, uh, not many. I think uh, just a, a few dozen uh, between the, the couple of events there. Uh, and that's actually sort of in keeping and trending even with uh, the vaccinations that have been, do, uh, that have been done at uh, the Mariners games and the Sounders games. Um, many of the folks that are coming now have been fully vaccinated. So uh, it was great and appreciate the partnership with Funco to, to provide that opportunity there. But uh, most of the folks that were there um, had been vaccinated, so so not not many. Okay. Um, question: What's the hospitalization rate, and how many deaths in the last week? Do we know? Um, do you have those numbers, Sean? I, I don't have those numbers in front of me right now, um, but we can certainly follow up on that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Working from home. Uh, hold, hold on a sec. I'm going to have to just uh, deal with it here. Um, see, how do you keep people energized when it appears COVID fight is ramping down? I'll, uh, Dave, did you want to start the answer or do you want me to start? <laughs> I, I'll speak from, from the DEM perspective and Sean may have perspective and I, I know Executive Summers does. Um, I, I think uh, keeping folks energized, we have a great team and uh, they're doing things to support the community. So I think that keeps them energized. It has been a long, long response. Um, but I also think we recognize uh, the contributions to the community and also that uh, as Executive Summers mentioned with, with the long-term recovery, um, there still is a lot of work to do. So um, again, it, it, while some of the efforts are ramping down, uh, there's another body of work that's ramping up and, and making sure we do our part to help the community recover from this is, is something that keeps people energized. Yeah, you know, just uh, echo that. I think it is a challenge. Uh, I think everybody's uh, tired from the last year and a half. It's been pretty intense. Uh, it, Snohomish County, at least, I know the health district and other places, but we have a ton of work to do. Um, we've got rental assistance dollars flowing in. I think last week I uh, signed for $11 million from the federal government to get out, and that's only 44% of the rental assistance that uh, we're going to get. So there's a lot of work um, ahead of us uh, during this recovery phase. And that's why we've stood up our Office of Recovery uh, and to get some dedicated people there because everybody else needs to get back to, to their normal jobs as much as possible. But we have uh, several years of recovery work. And um, again, the uh, ARPA funds, were, we've received the first $80 million this year and we'll get another $80 million next year to get out to the community in those uh, sort of areas that I mentioned earlier. There's a lot of work behind that, a lot of administration, setting up programs, getting contracts in place, documenting uh, how the dollars are spent. So it's, um, it's a big load of work. And I'm just encouraging people to kind of make sure they're taking care of themselves and take a breather and uh, get rested up, uh, but we've got uh, a long way to go yet in terms of recovery efforts. It's not going to be as flashy or as visible or uh, not uh, what we've been through in the last 18 months, but uh, that work has got to go on uh, at the county level anyway. So uh, long way to go, um, but uh, certainly it's a, a different mood. And I think people are looking forward to getting back to a more normal uh, pace and, and life. I, I mentioned, I think, last week that we're planning on opening our offices on July 6th for some um, public access um, types of services. Uh, it'll be a, a hybrid with some people working in the office, some people continuing to work at home, but uh, that transition will be happening. So it's got to keep going. Um, let's see. Sean, did you want to say anything else on that? Uh, yes, Dave. Uh, yeah, Executive Summers. Um, I, I, I would just add that, um, 
you know, the, the fight actually isn't ramping down. I, I think that in many respects, uh, we are entering probably the most crucial elements of, of the fight as we, um, as we will see the end of most of the restrictions imminently. Uh, in the coming weeks, I, I think for the healthcare and public health system, this is when when we have to be uh, at our most vigilant um, as a, as we watch the uh, the progression of the disease and make sure that we don't see significant increases. But it's also the opportunity where, as you mentioned, that um, you know the 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 fight is shifting in different ways. We, we're simply moving to a different front uh, on the battlefield where we have to be supportive and make sure people are taking care of themselves. Uh, taking care of others around them, supporting local businesses, uh, really making sure that we're doing all of those things and that we can in the recovery aspect. That's that's kind of where the fight is shifting. Yep, there's there's a lot of uh, people and families and businesses that still need a lot of help getting back going. And uh, again, we're at a, as Sean said, a critical point. So there's a lot of work going on. And, Again, I think the public's not going to be as focused on it, but uh, we certainly are. So, um, how have school clinics been going, Jason? Yeah, they've been going well. Um, we've uh, done six. We have another fifteen planned. They've been really successful. Uh, lots of people, um, lots of folks from our, our BIPOC and marginalized communities, people who are doing walk-ups. Uh, and folks who are bringing in their kids and then getting their vaccines uh, when they bring their kids in. So those have been really successful. And again, that was part of our transition to go to a more community-based model, um, you know, bringing, bringing vaccines closer to folks. And certainly schools are, are a place uh, where folks feel, seem to feel comfortable. So it, they've been really successful and we appreciate the partnership with the schools um, to, to get the vaccines out there. Uh, to these communities. So they've been very successful, very happy with that. Sean, anything to add to that? No, I think Jason is spot on the the um, the shift to the community-based clinics, uh, getting out into into the community to meet people where they are. Have been, uh, it's been a really successful transition. Um, I participated in a clinic that actually this weekend, um, really good to be out in the community and, and you know, I think we'll see those activities really continue as we move forward. It's been really good. That should be it. Um, let's see, there's some information in the chat box. Uh, we had less than fewer than five deaths last week and uh, there are 21 residents hospitalized uh, with COVID in Snohomish County as of yesterday. So. Any other questions this morning? Okay. All right. This Thank, is you. Thank you all. Heather and the Joint Information Center. We're going to go ahead and wrap up today, but please look for future media availabilities. Have a great afternoon.